Hello and welcome to Osmio's instructional video on how to properly install and maintain the Osmio Blackline reverse osmosis system. We will show the process step by step. In doing so, make it as easy and accessible as possible. Let's make sure you have all the necessary tools you'll need. An electric drill. 5mm, 7mm and a 12mm drill bit and the pipe wrench and a spanner and the Phillip head screwdriver For the next step, let's assemble the feed water system Be sure you have the diverter valve, the metal ball valve and the BDFE tape with you Apply. PTFE tape around the diverter valve, male thread connection side, and the same for the metal ball valve. After what? Screw the ball valve into the diverter valve. Make a full tightening with a spanner. Now we will fit the diverter valve between the main cold water feed, which normally has a half inch male thread connection, and the cold water line with half inch female thread to sink. Make sure to use the PTFE tape on the male thread to make sure the connection is watertight. You can use the spanner to support the diverter valve while tightening connections with a wrench. Now we can connect the white feed water tubing to the pole valve. Let's first remove the fastening nut. We can use the spanner if the nut is not rotating freely. For the next step, we can slide the nut on the white tubing, then push the tubing on the stem on the ball valve, and finally tighten the fastening nut with the spanner. To connect the system to drain, we need drain saddle kit, marker pen, Phillips head screwdriver, electric drill and a 7mm drill bit. It is important to choose the correct place for the drain saddle as it should be above the water level on the drain U-band. First we take the drain saddle and the marker pen to mark the correct spot. Then we use the drill to drill a hole into the drain pipe. Use the plastic fastening nut first and slide it on the tubing. Then slide the tubing through the hole on the drain saddle and fasten the plastic nut. Take the adhesive pad, remove the protective film and slide it on the inner surface of the drain saddle with the adhesive side of the foam pad facing the drain saddle. For the next step, place the drain saddle with the tubing onto the drain pipe and make sure the tubing will go through the hole first. Then use the bolts and nuts to connect the drain saddle back part to the front part. You can tighten the bolts with a Phillips screwdriver. Ensure a flat surface is available on the other side of the worktop before marking the spot to drill. It is to make sure that the plastic flange will fit between the copper sidewalls and the sink itself. To fit the single dispensing tap, first we need to find the correct place for the tap and mark the spot with a marker pen. And 
this case we will use first 5mm drill bit to drill the pre-hole and then 12mm drill bit to drill the hole for the tap threaded stem. For the next step we take the tap, the decorative base plate and the rubber gasket and place the tap through the worktop. On the other side of the worktop we will use faucet nut, locking washer and the flange. First we will fit the flange, then the locking washer tap with a faucet nut, first with the hand and then we tighten it with an adjustable wrench. Now we will connect the tubing to the tap. For that we will use the tubing nut first and slide it on the tubing. Then the tubing ring which is slided as well on the tubing. And for the last thing, we insert the tubing pin at the top of the tubing. Then push it into the tap, tighten with the tubing nut, with a fan at first. And to properly fix the tubing to the tap, we use adjustable wrench. For the next step we will fit all the filters that need to be in place before we run the system for the first time. Let's remove the elbow fitting from the membrane cap to be able to open the membrane housing and first we can remove the clip, push in the collet and with the other hand remove the elbow. Then we can use the narrow side of the wrench, untighten the membrane cap and open it. Now we can take the membrane, slide it into the membrane housing with a narrow side with two o-rings facing front. Let's close the membrane cap, screw it onto the membrane housing, tighten it with a wrench to secure it properly and to avoid any leaks. Now we can fit back the elbow fitting and make sure to place back all the clips removed. On the current filter unit, we have three pre-filters. Starting from the right-hand side, we have 5 micron sediment filter, where in the middle will be the carbon block, and on the left-hand side will be another sediment filter. We can place the cartridges inside the housing pole, and then one by one, screw the bowls with the cartridges into the housing heads. Now we can use the wider side of the spanner to give the final tightening to make sure that there will be no leaks. Once all the filters have been fitted, we can attach the filter main body onto the wall. And in order to do that, uh, we can have a marker pen with us, choose the correct spot, mark the spot, and then use the compatible screws and a screwdriver depending on the side wall material. Once the screws are fixed, we can attach the filter system to the wall. 
now we are ready to connect the unit up and we can start with the coconut shell post filter located at the top and we will connect it to the tap with the white tubing supplied in the kit. Next we can use the white tubing to connect it to the inlet water elbow fitting on the left and to the water feed connection on the main side. Let's now connect the tubing to the T-piece fitting on the left hand side of the post alkaline filter and to the fitting at the top of the tank. After what, we can open the valve at the top of the tank so that the lever is in line with the tubing which enables purified water to be stored inside the tank. And the last piece of the white tubing is fitted between the train saddle on the train pipe and train connection on the unit. If you have a pump version of the filter system, you can now use the power cord to plug it into a socket. Once the system is connected and ready to be used, we can open the feed water valve and the tap to let out first all the air trapped inside until water starts to dribble from the tap. We can leave it like this for 10 minutes until we close the tap which helps system to fill the tank. Depending on the incoming mains pressure, tank can fill up in a couple of hours. We recommend to empty the first full tank completely by opening the tap again to let water run until it's dribbling. After what we can close the tap again to let the system refill the tank and after that the system is fully operational. Now we'll have a look on how to replace the three post filters at the top. First, make sure to turn off the feed water valve, close the valve on top of the tank and open the tap to let out excess pressure. Then we can remove the black clips from both sides of the filters to be able to open push fit connections. For the next step, let's remove all the elbow fittings from the inline cartridges and it should be fine now to remove all three cartridges from the unit. To fit three new post inline cartridges, we can use the alkaline filter first and attach it to the filter clips at the top. The detox filter can be attached as the second filter and finally the coconut shell filter is attached with the filter clips to the detox filter. Now we can fit back all the elbow fittings that were removed initially and we can make sure to fit back all the black clips to secure the push fit connections to prevent any leaks. To replace the membrane which is located in a housing at the top, first let's make sure to turn off the feed water valve, close the valve on top of the tank and open the tap to let out excess pressure. After what, we can remove the clip from the membrane housing cap, which allows us to remove the elbow fitting. Then we can lift up one side of the housing to get a better access for the spanner. When untightening the membrane housing cap, it will help if we can hold the housing steady with the other hand, otherwise the whole housing will turn. 
as soon as the cap is loose we can remove it and use pliers to pull out the membrane which might be seized up during years of use. Thank you for joining us. We hope you find this video informative and helpful. If you have any further questions related to this video, feel free to contact us on our customer service line 0800 002 9533.